Hey everybody, welcome to Review from the Top. If this is your first time here, my name is Jordan and this is my review channel. You may have noticed it's been over 10 months since I posted my last review video. Not proud of that. Well, I have a perfectly good explanation for that and it's right here. Earlier this year, my wife and I became parents for the first time and as it turns out, infants are ferociously time consuming. Who knew? If you're a subscriber, thank you so much for bearing with me and hanging in there. I've got a lot of fun products that I'm excited to review in the months ahead, and I'll do my best to get those new videos uploaded as often as possible. Today I'm covering yet another drone review, but this particular drone is unlike any of the others that I've reviewed to date. This is the Stargazer, an FPV drone by a company called Hisinji. Not Hisingi, even though that's how it looks. Trust me, I asked them. The Stargazer Starter Kit is currently selling for $400, and it includes everything you need to get started in FPV, including the Stargazer drone itself, a controller, a set of FPV goggles, four battery packs, a multi-pack quick charger, and you even get this handy dandy little uh, carrying case bag type situation. Now I'll discuss the individual components more in depth in a minute, but I want to start this review off by saying how totally impressed I am with Hisinji and their creative approach to getting new pilots into FPV. If you're like me and you've never heard of Hisinji before, let me give you their quick uh, backstory. They're a Chinese company that started back in 2015 as a local RC and FPV flying club, and they eventually grew to become a full-blown manufacturing company. They specialize in customizable, easy-to-fly FPV drones, and their goal is to attract more beginners to the hobby by making FPV easy and fun. And in my personal opinion, they're absolutely crushing it. The star of the show here is the Stargazer. It's a small FPV drone equipped with a stationary fixed angle camera. Uh, it's slightly larger than the small whoop style category of FPV drones. I'm not sure of the actual size classification, but you can see the size here compared to my Blade Inductrix and this little MakerFire FPV drone that I have. Uh, the motors on the Stargazer are noticeably beefier and it flies considerably faster than these two, at least once you've fueled it up. And I'll explain what that means more in a little bit. The drone itself consists of two halves. Uh, the lower portion here consists of this sturdy plastic frame, the motors, uh, and the IMU, or the brains of the drone. The upper canopy half is made of the same durable plastic material. It holds the camera in place, uh, and it also surrounds the blades in flight, making it look totally awesome, and it also keeps you from destroying your props and your wife's furniture as you go ping-ponging your way through the house. I especially love these two little plastic fins in the back. I think they're a really nice accent and I think they make it look totally awesome. Now you can fly the drone around in the conventional way as an external pilot where you're just standing there with a the controller watching the drone do its thing. Uh, actually, if you're a new pilot, I recommend doing that a few times just so you can get familiar with the controls. Once you've got the basic controls figured out, the whole appeal of flying FPV or first person view is strapping yourself into the cockpit and flying from the pilot's perspective. To do that with the Stargazer, you use these included FPV goggles. Uh, the goggles have a, a, an internal antenna here, so there's no assembly uh, other than installing the included rechargeable battery and attaching this elastic head strap. Uh, the display is nice and clear with uh, adjustable brightness and contrast settings, uh, and the goggles are surprisingly light and comfortable considering their size and this somewhat boxy design. You even get some thicker foam wedges here for the nose portion of the goggles for those of us that were blessed with a slightly larger schnoz. So that's nice too. When you first open the Stargazer box, you see this little welcome packet inside that includes this colorful little foldout with a detailed backstory to help set the stage for this adventure that you're about to go on. You're an ace pilot named Cooper Finnegan of the 11th Mobile Excavation Regiment. You're flying the new Stargazer S-15 mining aircraft on a mission to harvest a recently discovered fuel source called Synergy Crystals that will help save the planet from a looming energy crisis that's facing humanity. When you arrive at the mining location, a magnetic disturbance causes your Stargazer to crash and disables its engines. Your mission is to harvest the nearby Synergy Crystals to repair your ship and ultimately save humanity. Now this fun little backstory isn't just a piece of marketing material. It's actually a way of introducing one of my favorite parts of the whole Stargazer experience, the phone app. The Hisinji app is unlike any other drone app I've ever used. Uh, the majority of the drones that I've ever flown require you to download a custom app that links to the drone's Wi-Fi signal. 
uh, and then it turns your phone into the primary flight display, and in some cases, your phone even becomes the controller. I know that's not no, uh, necessarily the case for most FPV drones that use goggles. Uh, still, the relationship between the HiSynG app and the flight experience as a whole is pretty unique. Though the HiSynG app does interface with the Stargazer through Bluetooth for things like uh, trimming out drift, calibrating the IMU, and upgrading the firmware, it's so much more than just an adjustment tool. For one, you don't actually use your phone to fly the Stargazer. You have your standalone controller for uh, flight controls, uh, and there's a transmitter on board the drone that sends flight video directly to the goggles. All the information you need to fly is overlaid directly onto the video stream directly in your goggles, including battery voltage, flight time, and there's even a little attitude indicator so you know which way the drone is pitching. So you don't actually need your phone to fly at all. Well, that's not entirely true. Normally my review videos, especially the drone reviews, include a lot of rambling, how-to information, and setup instructions for new pilots. I don't need to do that for this video. HiSynG has done a fantastic job of covering all those bases. Uh, inside the package, when you first open the box, you get this bright green card with a QR code on it. You scan the QR code with your phone and it takes you to a detailed setup video that walks you through the whole setup and pairing process in awesome detail and makes it super easy to just jump right into flying. And now here's the interesting thing. When you first set up your Stargazer, it's automatically in beginner mode. Or if we're sticking to the theme from the backstory, it has just recovered from a crash and it's limping along in desperate need of a proper fuel source. Unlike other drones, you can't just press a button to cycle through different speed settings and flight modes with the Stargazer. It just floats around lazily with gentle flight characteristics and nulled out stick inputs. If you want to increase its speed and maneuverability, you're going to need synergy. Now for me, this is where the novel concept behind the way Hisinji designed their app really shines. The entire concept here behind the Stargazer experience plays out like a really fun video game. In the app, Synergy is the currency that you need to acquire in order to upgrade specific flight characteristics for the drone. Uh, as you log flight time, you earn P points, or performance points, and S points, or Synergy points, which can then be redeemed in the app for Synergy. As soon as you start accumulating Synergy, you gain the ability to distribute that across the various flight categories to increase the drone's performance in that area. So for example, let's say I've earned eight synergy for starters. Now remember, the Stargazer starts off in beginner mode, so all of my control sliders are down at the very bottom. I can now take my eight synergy and distribute them however I want to. Maybe I want to upgrade my horizontal speed by three, my up and down speed by two, and my yaw speed by two, and then my acceleration by one. Once I've moved the sliders to distribute all my points where I want them, I hit the save button and the drone updates with those new flight parameters. In my experience, every time I've made an adjustment after uh, adding Synergy to that category, there was immediately a noticeable difference in those flight characteristics the next time I flew it. Now let's say after that flight, maybe I decided that I don't care all that much about all the other settings, I just want more speed. I just relink to the Stargazer, adjust my sliders again, and boom, I've added all my Synergy to the speed category to fly as fast as possible. This is an absolutely novel concept, and I totally got into it. I was genuinely excited to fly every day just to see how much synergy I would get so I could continue to increase the Stargazer's performance. Now, in addition to just flying, there are other cool ways to earn synergy as well. You also get bonus points for completing daily challenges, such as daily check-ins, seven-day streaks, and flying for 12 minutes a day, which is roughly the equivalent of free battery packs. These challenges help you rapidly build up those experience points. As you gain experience points, you also level up your pilot profile and earn achievement badges for different things along the way. The badges you earn have different values and rewards associated with them that include additional experience points and sometimes even additional synergy points. Most importantly, they make the whole experience way more fun and encourage you to keep on flying. Even crashing repeatedly, which let's be honest is inevitable for both novice and experienced pilots, even that's rewarded and celebrated with things like the Sir crash -a -lot badge, which I got after crossing the 100 crash threshold. That earned me a cool 100 experience points and 6 synergy. Totally worth it. I absolutely love this badge system. For an experienced pilot like myself, it's a breath of fresh air, and I think it's going to do wonders for the FPV community as a whole, by emulating a lot of the game mechanics and reward systems that make a lot of the most successful mobile games so popular. In this case, it results in a direct real-world benefit, though. Though the drone itself is really fun to fly, I found myself logging into the app every day just to see if there were any new challenges that I missed and squeezing in a quick uh, daily flight, regardless of how busy I was, just so I could complete my seven day streak and get those extra experience points. 
It's an awesome system and it tremendously enhances the enjoyment level of flying the drone itself. I especially love how Hisenji is encouraging new pilots that might be getting discouraged or frustrated from repeated crashes by celebrating it and rewarding them in a fun way. Nice job, Hisenji. Now just to be clear, 100 crashes may sound like a lot for someone who considers themselves to be a professional drone pilot, but I need to clarify that the Stargazer is equipped with a safety system that automatically kills the motor if you bump into something too hard. There are two sensitivity settings to choose from, but I found that even in the more aggressive mode, making contact with a wall or object at even medium speed was enough to stop the motors and log it as a crash. That was kind of annoying at first, but after multiple crashes, I started to see how it protected the motors and the props from major damage, and to its credit, I've had some seriously hard crashes with the Stargazer that would have had me shopping for replacement parts with any other drone. The Stargazer took it in stride. I've smacked this thing in the walls and furniture at full speed, and it simply bounced off. Don't tell my wife about that part. Aside from a, a broken fin, which I was able to glue back on, and some slightly bent prop tips, I've yet to encounter any serious flight terminating damages to the Stargazer, so that's a serious tribute to its durability. Now let's say you're flying through the house with your goggles on, you hit something, the motors turn off, and the drone falls out of the sky and lands upside down. No biggie. The Stargazer is also equipped with a turtle mode which automatically writes the drone when it's inverted. While the drone is upside down, holding this purple button here, and then pressing the launch button will, will result in a special beeping sound. Once you hear that beep, moving the attitude stick to the left or right will cause the drone to flip itself back over again so it's right side up and ready for an immediate relaunch. Another cool function in the event of a crash is this button that activates beacon mode. If you crash on a surface uh, where turtle mode doesn't work, such as in really tall grass, you can press this button and the drone will chirp for several seconds so you can wander around the backyard searching for it like you hunt for your car in a crowded parking garage. It's definitely a handy feature that I've already had to use. Now if you do end up damaging parts in a crash, it's a great opportunity to take advantage of Hisenji's clever upgrade inventory system for the Stargazer. Hisenji has produced a whole line of custom parts that you can uh, purchase to upgrade and personalize your Stargazer and make it as unique as you are. You can get different colored canopies, different colored motors, different colored props, uh, custom sticker sets for the Stargazer, uh, as well as custom sticker sets for the controller and the goggles as well. Not only do these upgrades make your drone unique and enhance the already awesome look, but they can also be scanned into your inventory in the app uh, using these little QR codes that come with the different parts. Now doing this gains you whatever experience points and synergy are associated with that particular item. Now I thought the original Stargazer looked awesome to begin with, that's this white canopy here. But I did pur purchase this additional dark canopy, as well as a new set of these green props, uh, and a new sticker set, and I absolutely love the new look. Now in addition to physical upgrades, you can also change the color of the Starga Stargazer's tail light here from within the app, so you can make it match whatever color scheme you've got going on, or if you just want to distinguish your Stargazer from your buddies if everyone's flying the original base model together. One quick tip if you do plan on upgrading your Stargazer's props and canopy. Uh, the FPV camera is actually mounted to the inside of the upper canopy using very tiny screws on a little bracket. So you'll need a small screwdriver to remove those screws, remove the bracket, then you can take the camera, unplug it, and then move it over to the new canopy. Uh, just be really careful when you're uh, plugging the camera back in. Uh, make sure those pins don't get bent, and then make sure you don't pinch any wires when you're snapping everything back together again. Uh, as far as the props go, uh, these were surprisingly difficult to replace. Hisenji does sell a toolkit that makes the prop removal a lot easier. I definitely suggest you get one, because I had a heck of a time getting these things off and then press back on again. I had to end up using needle nose pliers, and I was a little afraid about doing that. So. Uh, also make sure you look at the back of the diagram on the new props. Uh, it really does make a difference uh, what orientation they're in and it makes a difference where they go. And there's no distinguishing marks on the props themselves that tells you where to put them. So you have to pay attention to the way that they're angled to, uh, to make sure they go in the right location. So just one more thing to watch out for. Okay, I wanna talk about the actual flying experience now. Like I said, the Stargazer is a ton of fun to fly even in the beginner mode. I was able to quickly advance my pilot level in the app after only about an hour or so of flight time. And every flight gave me more synergy that I was able to use to increase specific flight performance characteristics. Now in full transparency, to save me some time and allow me to test the full capabilities of the Stargazer, uh, Hisenji was gracious enough to upgrade my profile on their end by maxing out my full quantity of synergy so I could uh, max out all the performance ca categories and really put the Stargazer through its paces. 
uh, cranked all the way up. This thing is fast. I mean, it looks fast when you're flying as an external pilot, but when you're uh, in the pilot seat flying FPV, the scale speeds feel insane. I mean, especially compared to the Inductrix that I'm used to. You definitely have to be quick on your reaction time if you're flying indoors. So the flight characteristics, even with everything maxed out, are still buttery smooth, responsive, and predictable. It only took a few battery packs for me to get used to the peppier feel of the settings. Then I was making tight turns and flying through narrow openings, just like the canyon run scene in Top Gun Maverick. In my experience, each battery pack gives you around four to five minutes of flight time, depending on how you're flying. So you get around 20 minutes total across all four packs. Uh, the drone automatically lands itself when the battery voltage drops too low, and swapping out a new battery literally takes just a, a matter of seconds. You just push from the front while you pull on the back and the battery pops right out. You pop a new one in, you set it down, wait for the lights to stop flashing while the drone initializes. and you're ready to hit the engines again and take off. No fiddling with tiny wires or little micro plugs. I think you made this process ridiculously easy and I really appreciate that. Uh, when you finally exhausted all of your batteries, you just pop them one at a time into the smart charger and the charger will automatically start charging them starting with the one that charges the fastest with the highest voltage so you can get back in the air quicker. Uh, you're looking at about 35 minutes to charge each battery in my experience, so around two hours for all four. Um, or you can just pop them off one at a time as they charge and continue to fly. Now the Stargazer will handle moderate wind just fine, so you can fly both indoors and outdoors. But for me, flying outdoors was a little trickier as a result of the video signal strength. The included goggles don't have any kind of external antenna. Uh, so the video signal got really fuzzy and unusable as soon as I flew it around the corner of my house or got behind a larger obstacle or vehicle. Signal strength while flying indoors was usable throughout the entire house, but it did get considerably fuzzier the more walls I had between me and the drone, as you would expect. One thing to note about the video transmitter is it's using signals within the normal race band of frequencies. There are six channels to choose from, and once you've changed the channel on the drone itself using the app, uh, you can do a quick scan with the goggles by long pressing this gray button here uh, and it will automatically scan all the frequencies available and lock onto the strongest signal so you don't have to worry about pairing everything individually. It just does it automatically. Uh, if you're flying with friends that also have stargazers uh, or other FPV drones, it's awesome that you can easily swap between back and forth uh, between these different channels. So that's a really nice feature. Also, if you're just getting fuzzy video or interference on a specific channel, just jump over to another channel and see if that helps. Now, since the transmitter is using common frequencies, uh, I was actually able to use my SkyZone FPV goggles to fly instead of the included Hisinji goggles. I got slightly better signal range with the flat panel and mushroom antennas on my goggles, but it still wasn't great around obstacles, so it probably has more to do with the transmitter on the drone than it does with the actual receiver antennas. Uh, with that in mind, the Hisinji goggles have actually worked surprisingly well. One option for the Stargazer that I wasn't personally able to test is the Hisenji DVR module. Uh, you can see the side of the FPV goggles, there's a spot to attach a separate module here that will let you record your video stream while you're flying and then upload the videos to the local media section of the app so you can share it with your friends after the flight. Um, unfortunately, the DVR module has been out of stock for several months so I wasn't able to test it for this review. Um, all the flight footage that you saw in this video, I actually used a different flight recorder for that. Uh, so I'm not sure how much better the footage would have been using the Hisenji uh, module, but I'm definitely looking forward to testing that out as soon as it's back in stock. So let me know in the comments if that's something that you guys would be interested in as well. Okay, I'm going to wrap this review up with one more awesome feature that I'm super excited to try someday. Hisenji has developed something called the Hisenji Grand Prix. It's basically a virtual drone race where you use your actual physical drone and you fly in a special room with other players in a virtual computer generated race course. Unfortunately, the Hisenji Grand Prix is currently only available at their facility in China as it requires a special room that everyone needs to fly in. But my contact at, at Hisenji tells me that there are plans to bring the virtual races to the US in the near future. I'm really excited about this, it sounds awesome. I'll definitely keep you guys posted when I know more. In the meantime, there's still a ton of fun to be had with good old fashioned conventional FPV flying. Hisenji has done something truly special with the Stargazer by drastically reducing the barriers to entry into FPV. There's no researching what size motors you need or how many cells your battery should have or what props will work best for your motor size. It's already good to go right out of the box. 
If you're flying with a group of friends and you all have stargazers, there's no worrying about your buddy's drone being more souped up than yours or if you're gonna be able to keep up. Everyone's on the same level playing field. The stargazer is a simple, durable drone with, a, with great flight characteristics that new pilots can learn on without fear of breaking something every time they take off. As their skills improve, they can unlock more speed and more maneuverability, so the drone essentially changes from a sedan to a sports car as they learn how to drive it. The game-like characteristics of the app and the clever badge system keeps even jaded pilots like myself from getting bored, and the upgrade options that Hisinji has made available for customizing your Stargazer means you and your friends can fly a whole fleet of them around the same backyard FPV course. This is what RC is all about for me. Getting together with friends and just having fun flying. I can tell that Hisinji's roots go back to a backyard RC club because everything about this Stargazer kit has that feel of, let's just go fly, who cares if we crash? Great job, Hi Sinji. Thanks for the awesome FPV experience. Now, if you guys are interested in the Stargazer, I'll include links in the comments to Hi Sinji's partner sites where you can purchase your own. No matter what your skill level is when it comes to FPV, you're gonna have fun flying the Stargazer, so definitely check it out. Hopefully this review was helpful for you guys. Let me know in the comments what questions you have about the Stargazer. I'll do my best to answer them. For now, thanks for watching, and happy flying.